Hey guys, I'm Jolie Samaka with Southern Charm Reads, making beautiful reads and teaching you how to make and sell them. In this video, I want to show you how to use Corel Paint Shop Pro, um, their batch feature. So um, when you first open the Paint Shop Pro, you're going to click on your edit tab at the top. And then what I like to do is just open up a sample of one of the pictures that I'm going to edit. So in this example, I'm going to just click, you know, you when you take pictures with your camera, you're going to do you're going to get all these different angles to make sure you have, you know, the perfect picture. So I just open up one to get a sample of it. And then I determine what how much um, brightness and contrast do I need to do or use to edit um, to bring out the uh, brightness of this picture. So to do that, there's a shortcut if you do shift and the letter B at the same time, B for brightness, it will, um, another dialog box will appear and it'll allow you to adjust your brightness and contrast. And it has slider bars that you can, you know, slide them back and forth. Um, that way, or you can use the ticks, or you can just manually type in the number. <clears throat> and then if you click preview here, if it's not clicked, you can, um, you know, it'll show you as you're making of uh, the changes. So if I like that 20, then I just determined, okay, 20 is the, the brightness and contrast that I'm going to use. Um, and then I just, let me cancel that real quick. So I'm just showing you an example on um, once you set the brightness and contrast for 20, um, you, you won't need to do it again once we do the batch. But let me just show you. First, you've got to set a script for the uh, brightness. So first, we're going to do File, Script, and we're going to do Start Recording. So now it's going to start recording every feature or every little click that we do um, from here on out. So remember we do shift and the letter B and then we make sure this is at 20, which it is, and then we click OK. And then we're going to do file, script, and we're going to do save recording. And then this allows you to um, save it. So you can see here that I've already done one that's a con bright Bright and contrast at 20, one at 30, and as I as I do more, um, I could have one at 50, I could have one at you know 15 or 25 or 35. So I just determine, um, you know, I just record these each time. But once I record it once, I don't need to record it every time because it'll be there, just like these two are there. So let me hit cancel, and I'm going to um, make sure I. Uh, stop this recording. Okay, so now that I know that that's set, let me close this. So you, let me see, close this, save changes, no. So every time um, I start a new batch, I first open up one picture to determine what the brightness and contrast will be. So I know it's going to be 20. So now I'm going to show you how to do the batch process. So you click File, Batch Process, and this is where you add your images. I don't know why it always remembers the last image that I had up there. But anyway, I'm going to add my images. So these are the images that I've took, taken with my iPhone, and I'm going to determine which ones that I want to show um, in my Etsy shop. So I click, I need five, so two, three, and then let's do that one and that one, a close up of the sign and hit select. And so then, then we're going to hit the next um, on the bottom and you can see it goes through these little um, uh, actions at the top. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, just show you some of the things that you could add. You could add info. So if you do add info and click edit, here it allows you to um, write over um, the top of the picture if you want to. If you want to write on top of it, um, let's, I've never actually used it, so I haven't. I haven't figured this out. Where is it placing it? I haven't seen it. So, but you can. Um, let's see. That's for the drop shadow. Arial. Oh, there it is at the top up here. Okay. OK, 
Can you just move it? No. So <clears throat> you could just play with these. I have not. Okay, so you can um, add these different features up here. So you, let's take those away. So if you wanted to type in your name, say if I typed in my uh, business name, it adds it to the top. It would be nice if it um, if you could move it down, but I can't figure that out real quick how to do that. Oh wait, here we go. Let's say position. So you can move it this way. This is pretty nifty. So if you wanted it like in the um, like very um, on top of your uh, photo so that it won't be stolen, and then you could take the opacity down to where it's just barely visible so you can still see the item behind your um, watermark you can do that that's really cool um, and it looks to me like you can almost if you wanted to um, I don't know what is this offset I'm trying to figure this out so I'm actually do not use Oh, wait, here we go. We'll check it out. So if you didn't want it right in the center, you could move it um, down a little bit using these markers. So if you wanted it right there, that'd be good. And then you could go back up here. You could uh, change the color if you wanted a different color. Um, so you wanted black. So you could change the color and everything. So that you can add a watermark that way. So I'm going to cancel because I don't want to add um, this info on mine. I have a watermark already. So if you click watermark and I hit edit, I can um, you can browse your computer and upload a watermark um, that you want to use, and you could tell it where you want to center it. If you want it tiled, uh, center, or in the corner, which I'm going to do, and then you tell it, you know, how how large do you want it, so you can adjust the different sizes that way. Um, opacity, you know, means how how visible do you want it? So this would be, you know, 100% opacity, so very visible, or you can back it off a little bit so it kind of like is not so prominent on the picture. And then if you want embossing or not, so I'm not going to do that. So I click OK. Now I'm going to resize. So I want to add resize, and then I'm going to edit the resize feature. I'm going to type in the width of a thousand, which is what Etsy likes um, to use for their zoom in feature on their um, shop. So I'm going to type that in a thousand and then lock aspect ratio. If it's clicked on, it'll automatically adjust the height. So we're going to click OK and then script. Remember, we recorded that script for the brightness. So I'm going to scroll down and find the one that I was going to use that we just um, created the 20 so I click on that apply and then these picture frame if you want to add a picture frame it's got um, a few samples um, that it, it gives you if you want to add picture frames I think you have to go in and purchase um, more or download from their website if you want more picture frames but I don't like using picture frames on mine so let me take that out real quick so I'm going to cancel and delete that. So now that's so these are the the changes that they're it's going to make on all five of those photos. It's going to add a watermark. It's going to resize it, and it's going to run a, um, a brighten and contrast. And then I'm going to click next. So it takes to the output settings. This is where you're going to change um, your destination folder. So where do you want it to go? So if I originated it in here. I'm going to probably add a new folder and just call it test. So I'm just going to go there. And then what do I want? How do I want to modify the file name? Um, you can hit has all these different um, uh, options over here that you can click the add. If you want to add the date stamp that the picture was taken, you can add that. Um, so you can add it anything that you want to. A lot of this stuff doesn't even really pertain to me for what I'm using it for. So I'm just going to add the custom text 
feature, which I type down here, and this is where I'm going to enter my keywords um, that will be important for um, any, so anywhere I upload it on the um, online, it'll have my keywords already in there. And then I'm going to add my document name on the bottom. So I can move it up if I want the document name in the front or move it down so it has my custom text at the beginning, which is better to have your keywords at the front of the, of the file name. So this is what it's going to look like. So this is your output example. So it's going to have your keywords that you've typed in, and then it'll have the document name at the end. So the document name is probably going to be like IMG 1200, you know what I'm saying? So it's going to have the numbers. So you need that so that it doesn't um, write over the same picture name. So you need something that's going to be different at the end so that it's not writing over this, the picture one, picture two, picture three, and it'll give you an error message. So I click OK for that. And then naming conflicts. So you want it to prompt you if there's a file name that exists or, you know, you can just tell it if you want to overwrite it or append or you just click whatever you want to there. File format is what format do you want? I'm going to choose JPEG, but if you click here, it gives you all these different options. But JPEG is all I need. <clears throat> and then I don't even mess with any of that down there. And then I'm going to click start and it'll show you the process. So it's doing five photos and um, they're done. Job progress is completed. You can see a report, but I never do. So I hit OK. Now, if I go and um, look in the file test, you can see that it's edited all of these pictures um, based on the batch process that we set it for. So I'm going to go back and um, edit this one photo. And let me tell you why, because for some reason, just the way I have the lighting and I took this picture, it didn't quite get all of it at the top. So I'm just going to um, click on the clone brush and I'm going to clone the, uh, the, the um, area right below it. So I right click to get the uh, location and then I um, put my mouse above it and I'm clicking the... Um, what is this? The left, the left mouse. I'm just clicking actually, normal click. So I can just clean that up. So that's good. And then I'm going to get rid of this logo down here because let me tell you why. I'm going to actually just manually <clears throat> add my logo in. I'm just going to copy it, paste it, paste as a new layer. And then if I click the little arrow, I can resize it. So I'm just going to resize this. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. No scale. I want, yeah, I want scale. So I just drag one corner. And then I can put it down where I want it. So I want, this is going to be the main photo. So this will be the photo that I put on Pinterest. This is going to be the only one that I put on Pinterest, not the other ones. So I want to make sure that this logo is actually or watermarked on top of the wreath, not down here in the corner. I want it to be so that somebody can crop it out and steal my image. I want my watermark to be on top. So then I just file um, save this one and there you're done so then when you go to your Etsy shop you have all of these photos that are already um, edited and they're ready to go and um, I promise you it is a lot quicker than you see how long it took me to do that one photo It is a lot quicker um, doing the batch process in paint shop pro than opening and editing and cropping each individual photo so I just want to show you how quick it would be um, now that you have the steps down um, to prove that it's going to be so much quicker than editing five individual photos. So I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to go through the process of what I would do and you could see how quick it's going to be for you.
There, I'm done. So all five photos are done that quick. Wasn't that very fast? So without all my talking and explaining everything, you can see how quick that going through um, the five uh, photos in the batch process is a lot quicker than editing them individually. So um, I hope this um, tutorial helped you and comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.